Welcome to the next concept under the ecology, uh, that is the diapos. Diapos is actually determined uh, genetically and uh, um, by endocrine functions, and it is a state of dormancy, or we can say it is a state where, where uh, the development, metabolic activity, etc., are suspended or arrested during embryonic, larval, pupil, or adult life of an animal. Uh, this phenomenon is found among uh, arthropods, especially um, insects, and it permits the uh, organism to survive um, unfavorable environmental conditions or seasonal situations. Uh, diapause is a unique adaptive mechanism for surviving um, uh, extreme uh, climatic conditions like uh, low winter temperature or extreme summer heat. It could be uh, lack of food supply, drought, etc. And it begins uh, long before the onset of unfavorable conditions and persists even after the disappearance of the unfavorable conditions. So it helps the individual to tide over unfavorable environmental conditions. And uh, we can see that uh, this diapos, it is the control, uh, uh, influenced both genetically as well as by hormonal functions. Uh, diapos is uh, frequently associated with seasonal environmental conditions. And usually, the, the organism they enter into diapause during the adverse period and uh, break from it on the return of favorable conditions. We can see it in many uh, group of organisms, um, but very specifically, we can see it in the case of uh, what we call insects. Okay, there are two types of uh, uh, diapause. One is obligatory, and the second is facultative. Obligatory, as the name suggests, it is always. It, uh, this kind of a diapose occurs always at a definite stage in an organism's life cycle. Okay, so to, uh, for the completion of the life cycle, the organism do undergo a period of diapause. So that kind of a uh, uh, diapose is known as an obligatory diapose. And here you can see uh, the, the, uh, the, that particular uh, diapose stage is actually an inborn uh, uh, um, without any immediate compelling conditions. Uh, this particular diapose period occur. In uh, this kind of a, a diapose, each individual of every generation undergoes diapose as a normal part of its life cycle, uh, re regardless of the environmental conditions, whatever happens outside. Obligatory diapose is common in those uh, species which have only one generation per year. And when uh, diapose is obligatory, the environmental effects, uh, the environmental factors affects only during the, uh, uh, the duration of the diapose and never its onset. Now, facultative diapose is actually influenced by stimuli. Okay, and it is considered to be the most uh, commonest type of uh, diapose. And it occurs only when unfavorable environmental conditions occur. Or uh, the organisms undergo uh, diapose only when it faces an unfavorable environmental condition. Okay, so it, uh, it it is it uh, the onset is triggered uh, with respect to the stimuli. The stimuli could be low moisture, low temperature, or high temperature, or a high uh, uh, such kind of environmental conditions trigger the um, organism to uh, undergo diapause. As already mentioned, there can be different kind of uh, reasons. One um, a major environmental factor that induces diapause is the actually the photoplay. That is the uh, day uh, link okay, the that is a light period and the dark period. How what is the duration so that influences the diapose? Uh, unfavorable conditions of food supply, temperature, and moisture also promote diapose. But the most important one among this is the photo period. Okay, then we can see we have already seen that uh, it is determined both genetically as well as um, by endocrine means. And one of the best examples for the, the um, hormonal influence on diapose is the uh, existence of diapose hormone in silk moth, bombyx moly. And here the hormone determines whether or not the egg should undergo diapose. Okay. So the, um, the hormone is secreted by a pair of neurosecretory cells situated on the subesophageal ganglion. I hope you remember that is uh, in the case of um, insects, they have a supraesophageal ganglion which represents the brain and the subesophageal ganglion which is actually the starting of the ventral nerve cord, isn't it? So here, the, um, uh, uh, what do you call diapose hormone, it is being produced by 
neuro secretory cells which are situated in the sub esophageal ganglia and this hormone is produced uh, like uh, under the uh, it is actually produced only when the uh, the um, organism is exposed to long photosynthesis that is when the day length is very long the uh, brain is uh, triggered to produce this hormone brain brain triggers the production of these hormone from the sub esophageal ganglia okay so the hormone directly influences the ovary to produce uh, diaposics okay so these diaposics are darkly pigmented and these eggs then undergo diapause right and since the release of diapause hormone is uh, stimulated only by uh, long photoperiod silkworm uh, silkworms developing during the short photoperiods uh, uh, and spring they do not release diapause hormone so they uh, lay non diapause eggs which are non pigmented and they do not undergo diapause so i hope it is clear that is in the case, in the case of uh, uh, the silk moth they produce the when uh, the silk moth the uh, adults are exposed to uh, longer photoperiods what happens is the brain is triggered to stimulate the sub esophageal ganglion to produce the diapause hormone this uh, diapause hormone produced by the sub esophageal ganglion it uh, actually influences the ovary to produce uh, eggs which are referred as diapause eggs they are highly pigmented or darkly pigmented and these darkly pigmented diapause eggs they undergo diapause that is a period of uh, uh, like suspended metabolic activity okay and um, but those uh, um, what they call uh, moths which are uh, uh, ready to lay eggs during the short photo period of time that is during the winter or the spring what happens is since those uh, uh, what they call adults are not exposed to longer photo periods the brain doesn't uh, trigger the uh, sub esophageal ganglion to produce a diapause hormone hence the ovary is not stimulated to produce diapause and those eggs which are produced during that time they are known as non diapause eggs and these are actually non pigmented and they doesn't undergo any uh, diapause so that is actually diapause inducing factors can be uh, found and, but uh, ultimately it is triggered by photoperiod okay it is influenced by the photoperiod so i hope it is clear diapause is actually a period uh, of dormancy or uh, suspended metabolic and reproductive activity and it is seen in many different uh, groups of animals especially uh, arthropods and specifically and the arthropods insects are the prominent ones which show the diapause uh, and this diapause can be found during embryonic larval pupal uh, and even the adult uh, stages of the life cycle of animals and this is mainly done to tide over environmental conditions um, uh, like unfavorable environmental conditions there are two types of diapause obligatory and facultative obligatory is one where um, the the particular species do have a diapause stage in every generation okay so uh, to complete the life cycle the uh, uh, organism or the uh, organisms under that particular species need to undergo a diapause period facultative is not like that facultative diapause is one where uh, the members of um, certain members of the species will undergo diapause only when they are exposed to unfavorable environmental conditions okay so uh, every generation need not have even in the same generation every individual need not have only those individuals which are prone to unfavorable environmental conditions they undergo diapause and even before on the onset of uh, unfavorable environmental conditions the diapause will be uh, the uh, species will, the organism will start to uh, into, get into the diapause phase and only after the environmental conditions uh, become favorable the um, what you call the organism will emerge out from the diapause condition right so this is about the diapause thank you